What's up guys, it's your boy, Racy Boy, back with another video. Don't mind the glare behind me, but I was trying to get some different lighting here. So there might be a glare like right here on my chest, unless I move like to the side like that. Maybe I'll turn like, there we go. Just block it with my big body. Um, <laughs> so guys, we're having egg rolls that I bought from Walmart. These are little store-bought egg rolls. I don't know why I didn't keep the box, but I wanted to show you guys my egg rolls that I'm having. Oh my gosh, and it just fell apart, this one. Mine are better. Mine are so much better than these egg rolls that they have. But we're going to say grace for and we're going to try it and we're going to talk, guys. Real talk, okay? We're going to do another real talk, okay? I say, guys, dear God bless this food in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so here's the egg roll with some hoisin sauce on it. We're going to bite into it. Hopefully it's nice and warm in the inside. Uh oh. So, real talk. Um, real talk, real talk for it. I have a story to tell you guys. Mental illness, and I know I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but I want to be open with you guys because I feel like I need to be an open YouTube channel. And there's a lot of YouTubers that are not that open with talking about stuff that they deal with on a daily basis. I want to talk to you guys like real talk because <clears throat> when you're dealing with mental illness, it's you have good days and you have bad days, right? But I want to tell you my journey. So I went through a lot of stuff in life, as you guys know, and it, I'm really going to write a book. I'm serious about that. I'm saving money right now because it costs like almost $800 to write a book. It's really expensive. If you're gonna have a ghostwriter, if you write it yourself, you're good. Then you just need a publisher. But, um, because I've had so much stuff happen to me, mental abuse, physical abuse, all the different stuff that I've had in my life, I was diagnosed I want to say 16 when I moved to Florida, I was diagnosed with PTSD. And then I was diagnosed again with it at 21. I didn't even know you could be diagnosed with it twice, but it was different doctors. So it's just, it basically just never went away. So anyway, I had an attempt on my life earlier when I was in high school because I was being bullied. I didn't have a lot of friends. I just moved to Florida. It was new. Um, I just remember, I just remember, um, I just remember, um, feeling really isolated and alone by myself, you know, didn't have anybody. And I remember my first doctor, my first psychologist that I saw wanted to put me on some type of anxiety medication or depression medication and I didn't want to try it at first I was like no you know because you hear horror stories about it or whatever but I tried it and she started me on the lowest milligrams 10 milligrams that crap didn't even do nothing like it didn't work at all and so I was like I was like I told her I was like doctor is it supposed to be like this and then she's like you know for your size because I was super super big at the time she's like for your size we probably need to do more well um, This was 2015. She wanted me to leave my ex-girlfriend. She wanted me to focus on myself. And I wouldn't focus on myself. I didn't want to focus on myself because it was scary to focus on myself. Um, I remember, I'll never forget, I'm like, she gave me the new medication I tried it one day. Mm -mm. I did not feel myself. I felt high the whole time. And I was like, I kept telling my mom, I'm like, mom, I don't like this feeling. I don't like this. She's like, well, then take half, you know, or tell her it's too high, you know, because she went from like 10 to 20. And she was like, you know, because she thought that would be better for my size. But it made me feel weird. I did not like the way it made me feel. So I basically just stopped taking it. And I never went back to that doctor. So then I find another doctor, then another doctor, then another doctor. By the time I got to my eighth 
doctor, and I mean psychologist. He did hypnotic therapy on me. Basically, what he does is, <clears throat> and if you're older or younger, you might know about this if you deal with depression or anxiety or PTSD or whatever. They're all the same. What she does, or what he did was, he had me hold these little ball-looking things and had a wire that went to him where he could turn up the shocks, basically. And what he does is he makes you find your happy place and then makes you go to the darkest part of your life, right? And makes you break down those walls. And so he made me, like, literally break the, down these walls of stuff that I had locked away from my childhood and from other situations in my life and literally had me work through it. And if he didn't do that... There's no way that I would be where I am today. There's no way I would be where I am today because I would have never been able to discipline myself and say, look, you need to make a change and get a backbone and be like, that's not a healthy relationship and walk away from that. You know, that and JAMA. Like if I didn't have that and then the therapy, there's a chance that I wouldn't be here today because I came so close to death with the blood clot and pneumonia. Like I basically ate myself to death almost. Um... Um, so I never got back on any type of antidepressants, but I want to now because even though I've done this surgery and I've done all this stuff, the surgery was not going to fix an eating disorder. That was going to be you to fix the eating disorder. That was going to be your choice to fix it. And it wasn't going to fix depression or anxiety. And the counselor that I had, it's like, I don't know if he walked away from us or he doesn't want to work with us. I don't know what happened, but... I can't get a hold of him or hear anything from him. So I don't know what's going on with him. But I really like the guy. The last time I was supposed to do something with him was last October when I was in Texas. And I couldn't talk to him because I was, I just didn't feel like talking to a counselor at that time. So um, ever since then, it's like he's ghosted us. Like he doesn't answer my calls or anything like that. So I don't know what's going on. But it's fine. I can find another one that my insurance actually covers. My insurance didn't cover him. So I can find one that my insurance covers. But... I'm thinking about getting back on antidepressants. I don't know. And don't take my don't take my advice because I'm doing it wrong. You don't stop one and then get back one on get on another one after five or six years later. You're supposed to be on one the whole time and they can change the levels. Me, I stop and go with medication and that's not healthy for me mentally or physically because that can mess you up psychologically. And so I literally um the other reason why I stopped was because I told myself that I could fix myself. And I hate when people do that. You can't fix yourself. If you're really damaged, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I hate when men, and especially men, think that you're weak if you cry and you're weak if you ask for help. I hate that. And it could be the way that they were raised. It could be the way that they were raised. Like, real men don't cry. Real men don't ask for this. Real men don't show that they're in pain. I mean, it could be that, too. And I hate that. I think that that's so narcissistic i think that's so stupid that real men do cry real men do show that they're in pain um real men do ask for help if you're a real man but if you're weak and you're and you and you you it makes you look weak if you can't ask for help basically and it makes you look weak when you hide behind something or hide behind somebody i think that that's pathetic that the men in today's society feel like they they have to be so strong and they can't ask for help. And I hate that the people that the younger kids that are watching these these YouTubers and these TikTok stars and even me sometimes like that they think that, OK, your life is so perfect and da, 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 and you don't you don't ever show that you're in pain. You don't ever show that you're vulnerable. You don't ever show that you're miserable or depressed or whatever that. Those kids think that that's true. So then they try to put on that act. And I'm talking about like the biggest YouTubers and TikTokers who act like everything is so perfect in their life. But then as soon as something dramatic happens, you don't know my pain. You don't understand what I'm going through. Don't judge me. But it's like, well, if you would share that, and I'm not saying you have to share your whole life, but if you would show your vulnerable side and if you would show when you're sad and depressed, then people could relate to you more because they were like, oh, well, so-and-so went through that. So it's okay that I'm going through it or so-and-so went through it, but they got through it, you know? Oh, I get those comments all the time on TikTok. Like, how are you still going? What, like, what's your motivated? What motivates you? And I said, my nieces and my nephews motivated me and my family motivated me because I wanted to be here for my family. That was one of my biggest motivations. 
Oh, well, certain family members. But um, the biggest thing was just between me and God. Like, if you're religious or you're not religious, whoever you believe in, whatever your higher power is, and I'm not judging, we do not judge here, make that be what makes you want to motivate you to get better. If it's getting help, getting clean, if it's stopping smoking, if it's stopping whatever your addictions are, if it's helping you with that, do that. Because at the end of the day, when it's just you in your room by yourself or you in your car or you in your walk by yourself or something, just think like, where am I going to be five years from now? Where am I going to be 10 years from now? Where am I going to be from 20 years from now? Think, because at the end of the day, you are alone most of the time. Basically, you're by yourself. If you're not married and you don't have a girlfriend, you're completely alone and you don't have family. You're by yourself. And I understand why a lot of people are sad and depressed because they are isolated a lot, especially with this pandemic happening. And please get vaccinated if you want to. It's your choice at the end of the day. Not really kids. Parents might be making the kids do it, but it is your choice at the end of the day to get vaccinated if you're old enough. But it saves other people. It's your choice too. And if you don't believe in it because you don't trust it, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. But if you do want to get vaccinated because you have grandparents or your family members that have illness and you want to be around them this summer, then get vaccinated because it protects them too, especially if they have an illness. I'm only getting vaccinated because I wanted to go see my sister and I live with my grandpa and my grandpa's like almost 90 this year and I have older parents and older aunt. I didn't want to get them sick either. So that was another reason why I got vaccinated. And then plus I have my own health issues with having low iron, being anemic and just having a major surgery. I'm more at risk and having asthma. So I'm more at risk to catch the virus. But anyways, just know, just know who you are. Know your truth. Like I always say, own your mistakes. Own when you're wrong. Don't hide behind some type of mask. That's what we, I was having with my sisters and them. Just own your own, your own, own your own mistakes. I'm still trying to own mine 30, almost 32 years later. I'm still trying to pick up the pieces of my life. So it doesn't matter what age. And I don't have a girlfriend and I'm not married and I don't have kids. It don't matter. Whenever God thinks that you're ready, that's when it'll happen. And I'm done looking. I'm so done looking. I've, I've got it out of my mind. I've told myself you'll never be with someone. And as soon as you do that, then the right person basically falls in your lap or you bump into them or something. And the next relationship, I don't want it to be one-sided. I want that girl to want to be in a relationship with me too. I want it to be both ways where we truly love each other. And we put God first too. Like, that's what I want. Like, I look at my best friend and his wife. I look at my sister and her husband. I look at my parents' marriage. I look at other people who I look up to that they put God first in their marriage and they've made it work. So that's basically what our topic is. Table talk slash mukbang today, guys. But I love you guys. Have an awesome Monday. And I'll see you guys later with another video. Peace. Go get you an egg roll. I only ate one. so And it cut four in a pack. So I only had two. But... I have one here left, so I actually only had one egg roll. Love you guys. Peace.